All right, example two is the harder example. This one I'm going to have to use some algebra, and it's, it's some ugly algebra. Um, this is our special type of function. Remember, that has to do with our function that involves labor and capital, units of labor, units of capital, and then that, that tells us how our productivity level is. Remember the kubi dobb formula? And that's a common one in economics, a very common equation. All right, so in this case, the total cost for units of labor is 200, uh, which represents the x, the units of labor. Sorry, units of labor is x, and the cost for labor is $200 per unit. Units of capital is y, and the cost for capital is $300 per unit. It's subject to the constraint, 200x plus 300 So again, this would be the budget, right? They can spend $200 per unit of labor, $300 per unit of capital, and they have $60,000 to spend, right? And again, technically it would be $60,000 or less, but we always set it up with the equal to because, again, it's just easier to always do that. All right, so capital and labor are... Um, Related in the following function, f of x, y is 100 x raised to the 3 fourths, y to the 1 fourth. Remember, the, the variables are raised to fractional powers that always add up to 1. Right, so x raised to the 3 fourths, y raised to the 1 fourth. Gives us the amount of items produced, right, when we spend so much on capital and labor within our budget, right? We, can, we don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend. We only have $60,000 we can spend. So I have to find what the optimum amount I need to spend on capital and labor in order to produce the maximum amount of items within my $60,000 budget. All right, so again, first thing you do is you set up the equation. So remember the constraint equation, which involves my lambda. The first thing is, well, you write your original, which is 100x to the 3 fourths, y to the 1 fourth, minus lambda times, and again, we set that equal to zero, so it would be the 200x, 300y minus 60,000 would be my zero, and so that goes in here. So 200x plus 300y minus 60,000 is what we multiply my lambda by. All right, so that's step one. All right, find the partial derivatives and, and set them equal to zero, kind of combining step one and two. And so I'm going to just write them up here. So f sub x, remember it's the first part with respect to x, so 100 comes along. The derivative of x is 3 fourths y to the negative 1 fourth, or sorry, x to the negative 1 fourth, times y to the positive 1 fourth, minus lambda times, right, lambda, negative lambda, and then I take the derivative of the constraint with respect to x, well that would be the number 200. And I'll go ahead and set it equal to zero. All right, then the first order derivative with y, well the 100 comes along, the x to the 3 fourths comes along. I take the derivative of y, which is 1 fourth y to the negative 3 fourths. So remember, the way the copy dog works when I talked about this before, is that's always going to be the case, right? When you take the derivative, you should have the positive of one and the negative of the other. All right, then minus lambda times the derivative with respect to y, well the number in front of y is 300. Set equal to zero, and then the constraint equation is what the last one is, right? Negative 1 times the 200x, 300y minus 60,000 equals 0. And again, that's always the last partial derivative. All right, so we're going to have to solve these. And so what you do is when you solve them, and I'm going to write them down here a little neater. So I'm going to go ahead... And simplify. So I've got my 100 times my 3 fourths in the first term. So that comes out to 75 x to the negative 1 fourth y to the positive 1 fourth minus 200 lambda equals 0. The second one comes out 25 x to the 3 fourths y to the negative 3 fourths minus 300 lambda. And then the last one I'm just going to write as the constraint equation. 200x plus 3, I can always do that, equals 60,000, right? If I divide out the 1 and move the 60,000 over. This is obviously not linear. I've got x and y raised to fractional powers. And so I'm actually going to look at the first two equations first. And I'm going to talk about this in my next. I'm going to hold off on this one to the very end. All right, that's always the neater one. 
And so what we do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since we don't do anything with lambda, I'm going to eliminate the lambda variable first. All right, and so I kind of state that in my next set of notes here. All right, in order to solve by substitution, the first thing you do is you take your first two equations, those are the only two with a lambda variable. Solve equation one for lambda and equation two for lambda. So you're going to get lambda equals something from equation one and lambda equals something from equation two. And so this is a substitution. So you're going to set them equal to each other because you're going to substitute out the lambda variable. You're going to kind of eliminate the lambda variable because we don't do anything with it. And you can find it if you want to. Once you set those two equations together, you should have an equation now with just x and y's in it, which is what you have in your last equation, right? Because it's the constraint equation. It also only has x and y's. Now you have a system of just x's and y's. And then you solve accordingly. You pick one of the equations to solve for one of your variables. Usually the constraint equation is the easier one because it's linear. Substitute it back into the other one. All right. Again, so this is where you, there's a little more leeway here. So this is more like the regular substitution. You substitute out either x, substitute out y, solve for x, solve for y, and then plug it back into one of the equations to get back to the other variable. All right. So we'll set that up. So I take my first two equations and solve. So I'm going to take equation one and solve for lambda. And so I take my 75x to the negative 1 fourth y to the positive 1 fourth minus 200 lambda equals 0. I'm going to solve for lambda. In this case, so that means I move the 200 lambda to the other side. So I had 200 lambda. And so I get my 75x to the 1 4, negative 1 fourth y to the positive 1 fourth equals 200 lambda divide out the 200 and so I get 75 divided by 200 I might leave it as the fraction it comes out to 3 eighths actually if I'm going to do that then I'm going to rewrite it as the entire fraction so y stays because it's a positive, so positive 1 fourth, x moves down here to the positive 1 fourth. And if you could leave the negative variable, that's fine, remember this was a negative 1 fourth. So I moved it down with the a. Equals my lambda. Alright, so there's my first equation where I've set it equal to lambda. Now I do the same thing with the second equation. Alright, so I'm going to take my 25 x to the 3 fourths, y to the negative 3 fourths, minus 300 lambda equals 0. And do exactly the same thing. Move 300 lambda to the other side. And so I get my 25x to the 3 fourths, y to the negative 3 fourths equals 300 lambda. Divide by my 300 again. I'll probably do the same thing. I'll leave the fraction, right? 25 divided by 300 comes out to 1 12th, that's my right over here, 1 12th, up with the 1, I leave the x term, so I get 1 times x to the 3 fourths, move the y term down, y to the negative, I leave it down, so positive 3 fourths, equals my lambda. Alright, so I've got my two equations set equal to lambda, so this is a substitution step, I'm eliminating the lambda variable. I'm taking this equation, setting it equal to this equation because they're both equal to lambda, right? So I'm substituting out the lambda. And I'm going to write that in my next line. Right. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to write that out. So I get my 3, I'm not sure I write it down correctly, 3y to the 1 4 over 8x to the 1 4 equals 1 x to the 3 fourths, so I'm just going to write x to the 3 fourths, over 12 y to the 3 fourths. And what's nice about this Kobe Dobbs formula, even though the numbers are ugly and we've got fractional powers and all that, when we solve it this way, this is why this is the way I encourage you to solve it, now I've got a proportion, right? I've got a fraction equals a fraction, and actually it's set up really nicely. Now we do what's called cross multiplication. I multiply across, and when I do that, I actually get a really nice equation. Here, I'm going to write it out just so that you can see it. 3y to the 1 fourth times 12y to the 3 fourths equals 8x to the 1 fourth times x to the 3 fourths. 
Right, so first it's the 3 times 12, which is my 36, right? 3 times 12. So when I take y to the 1 fourth times y to the 3 fourths, I add my powers, right? Well, 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is 1, right? If you type it in the calculator, right, I get 4 fourths, which comes out y to the first, or just y. In the second equation, it's 8x. Again, same thing. I get x to the 1 fourth times x to the 3 fourths. My 1 fourth plus my 3 fourths just leaves me with an x. And so now I get a nice little equation where I've got an x term set equal to a y term. And so my next step is to solve. So now I've got, there's my equation. All it has x and y's. If I bring down my constrained equation, which is my last derivative, right, if I go back up here, this constraint equation, now I'm going to bring this one down and it also involves only x's and y's. So I'm going to be careful and write it down, 200x, 300y, equals 60,000. Alright, so 200x, 300y equals my 60,000. Now I've got two equations with just x's and y's. And actually in this case, it's easier to solve this equation for x. I'm going to solve this first equation here for x. Alright, to solve that for x, I just divide out by my 8, which again, 36 divided by 8 is going to give me 4.5y equals x. So x equals 4 times, or 4.5y. Take that up here, substitute it in for the x term, so I get 200 times 4.5y plus 300y equals my 60,000. And now I just solve, and again, this one's not too bad. Four and a half times two hundred is nine hundred plus three hundred equals sixty thousand, and so I get twelve hundred y equals sixty thousand, and so take my twelve hundred divided into my sixty. And so y comes out 50. If y is 50, well then I find x by plugging it in here. And so I take my 50 times my 4 and a half. So 4 and a half times 50 equals my x value. My x value is 225. And so there's my critical point. x is 225, y is 50, and we assume it's giving us whatever we want, which in this case is my, my maximum. And then you find it. All right, so the last step would be plug it back into the original equation. So remember, the original equation was 100. I think I remember which one was x and which one was y. So x was the 3 fourths, y was the 1 fourth. Okay. x is the 3 fourths, y is the 1 fourth. All right, so again, Plug it into that one equation carefully. Make sure you're careful with your fractional powers. Uh, again, rule of thumb is to always put parentheses around them. And so it comes out. And again, I'm around it since it's items. I can't remember if it's in hundreds or what it, what it was. My units. Too far, too far. No, not far enough. Uh, units of capital, so it's just units. Alright, so it's just units. Okay. It's not in hundreds of units or anything like that. So if they use 225 units of capital, 50 units of labor, they produce a maximum of about, again, it is an approximate, 1,500, 15,408 units would be the optimum value. So again, that one is the harder case, um, but if you kind of set it up like I did, you sort of get to down to a nice, neat system that you can solve when we eliminate the lambda variable. And again, that's the rule of thumb. Now, the book doesn't do it a different way, um, and you can use my method or the book method. I don't care which method you use as long as you can, you know, do the algebra. And it's there's, again, multiple ways to get down to the algebra. All right, this is just my preferred method. All right, we'll stop there and pick up more examples in the next video.